Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training. In today's video, we're gonna talk about trailer loading. So trailer loading is a big topic for a lot of horse people, and it's something that many of us have probably been frustrated with or been challenged by at some point in our handling of horses. Trailer loading is tough because I believe that it is inherently a bad experience for the horse. So when we are talking about loading a horse on a trailer, we're essentially doing two things. First, we have to desensitize them to the idea of going into the trailer and standing in an enclosed space like that. And then we have to desensitize them to standing there as it's moving and it's, as it's going down the road. So we've got to get them desensitized, but in the process, we also have to teach them our cues and what we expect for them to walk on the trailer, stand there, wait for the, you know, the back bar to be closed, and then stand there quietly. And again, when we're taking them back off, the cues for standing and waiting as, we're, as we untie them, as we lower any bars, and then asking them to back off. So there's a lot of things that we have to teach them as we're just getting them used to the whole idea. But the challenge with trailer loading is, like I mentioned, we spend all this time desensitizing the horse and hopefully getting them comfortable with going on the trailer, standing there. But as soon as we start actually taking them someplace, it's stressful. And we can try to reduce that stress by maybe trailering them with companions, providing them with food, and spending lots of time getting them used to it. But there's so many things that can happen on the road that can basically resensitize the horse to being on the trailer or just scare him about the trailer. So there's loud things, there's trucks, uh, there's motorcycles, there's sirens. The, you know, we might hit the brakes hard and throw the horse off his balance. Anything like this is gonna make the trailering experience more stressful. And I think this is why it's so common that we can have horses that maybe were loading great but then we take them someplace, they have a bad experience, maybe we don't even know what it was, but something happened that scared them and they don't wanna go back on the trailer and then we have to kind of start the bottom and build it back up with those better experiences. Now, I think that the best way of approaching trailer loading is doing it slowly and often. So the more that we can expose the horse to the trailer, the more that we can put him on the trailer without going anywhere. So making it a better experience by just going on and perhaps feeding him on the trailer or letting him rest there, then we can start to increase the likelihood that he's gonna keep loading for us consistently because he's had more good experiences than bad. Now there's lots of different little issues that can come up when we're working with different horses in the trailer. What I'm gonna do today is just spend a few minutes working with one of the horses that we have here at the farm that tends to be a little bit tough to load and I'm just gonna talk through the strategies and the things that I do with him. Now before I bring him up, I wanna talk a little bit about safety in the trailer. So whenever we're putting horses on the trailer, no matter what type of trailer we have, we've got to really think about safety for the horse and for us. If you have a horse that is difficult to load and you plan on actually putting him in and enclosing him in the trailer, most of the times trailers are set up that that's going to be a much easier and safer process with two people. Now if you're just putting your horse on and off to get him used to the process, you can probably do this pretty easily by yourself. When you are closing the horse on the trailer. So whether you are closing um, like the butt bar on the back of a lot of trailers or in the type of trailer that I have here, which is a stock type, all we have is this door that swings open and shut. When you close it, um, I personally like to close anything so that it's secure. So that if the horse starts to come off, he doesn't hit it and it doesn't give and have that experience of He's pushing and it gives and all of a sudden he comes flying out of the back. So I've just found that that can actually cause more anxiety and more stress and kind of put the whole process back. Then when you do go to that step of closing him in, close him securely. So when he comes back, um, you know, you're basically controlling his movement that he can't break something or he can't um, you know, push something out of your arms and come flying out. It's also a safety thing because if someone's holding a bar in the back or holding a door and the horse goes to fly back against it and he hits it and that door goes flying, the person that's holding it could get hurt as well. Another thing is I don't 
like to tie horses in a trailer preferably until they're closed in, especially if you're tying them with their hind end facing out the back of the trailer where they can start to back up. That can be another experience where the horse starts to back, he feels himself tied, he panics inside the trailer, and you can have accidents of him you know, starting to fall outside the trailer or just having a really stressful episode inside the trailer that's gonna make the whole process more difficult for you. So before you tie, make sure that they're closed in. And if you're doing this in a case where you've gotta send the horse in, then it's better to take the time and work with that and train them to send in um, so that you can send them in, have them stay there, close them, and then tie. In my experience, I've just found that that's the safest way to do it. So what we're gonna do next is go down, get Bandit. We're gonna bring him back up here to the trailer and then we'll just work through some of the loading issues with him. So we're here now with Bandit and I'll explain a little bit first what he is wearing, because um, this isn't necessarily conventional trailer loading equipment, but I have a reason that I've decided to use this on him, and I've been using it pretty successfully. So all this is, is a cavison over his halter. And the reason I have this cavison on is he learned somewhere along the line that he could um, rip his head away and then just take off from the trailer. And with the halter, um, I'm not physically strong enough to stop him from doing that. So he learned that was a very effective technique for just removing himself from the whole situation whenever he decided that, that he'd had enough. So what I did is I put this cavison on because it gives me more control of his head so that specifically when I'm asking him to go on the trailer, I can keep his head straight and he's not able to, to take it away like that. The reason that I chose to use a cavison over something else, say a chain, is that the cavison has a very direct pressure release. So if I'm not pulling on it, there's no pressure on it. One thing that I've noticed can happen with chains is that, um, is that the chain can tighten on their nose and then it doesn't release very well. So that's why I'm using the cavison instead of something like a chain. Now I have it over his halter because obviously I don't want to tie with the cavison. So if I'm putting him on the trailer and I'm planning on tying him, his halter's right here so that I can change my lead rope and I'm able to just tie him and take the cavison right off. Now, what I'm starting with here is actually what I've been doing with him for a few minutes before we turn the camera back on. And I'm just working on having him just respond to basic requests here on the ground in front of the trailer. So he's like a lot of horses that have some trailering issues in that he starts to get uh, varying levels of anxiety as soon as he even sees a trailer. Oh. So I like to first start with working him around the trailer and not immediately asking him to go on until I feel that one, his anxiety level is starting to come down, and two, that he's responding consistently enough that I feel I'm gonna have some degree of success when I go to actually load him. And this has to do with the idea of thresholds, which we discussed in one of the articles, and that is the idea that we want to, when we're working on something that we're desensitizing or we're working on a fear issue, we want to stay under threshold where the horse is still able to um, bring their focus back to us as the rider or handler and not be completely focused on whatever the distraction is, such as the trailer. Now, unfortunately, just because of some space issues at the farm right now, we're kind of in a high distraction zone anyway. So we've, we're right by a road and there's some other things that are distracting him. Oh boy. Oh boy. Good boy. Good. But as we're working here, he's starting to get lighter. He's still responding to my cues. And he's also starting to stand a little bit more consistently, which for him 
is a sign that I know he's starting to calm down a little bit when he can start to stand, even if we've still got some distraction. So we're going to um, go to the trailer now. And when I go to the trailer, I use a combination of negative reinforcement, so a tapping cue and a pressure cue forward with the rope to ask him to go on. Um, but I also use positive reinforcement. I have treats in my pocket and I'll treat for steps forward and then I'll slowly just kind of raise the criteria that I'm treating for. Now, I think it's important when using food to use it as a reinforcement instead of a bribe. So it's not like I'm holding carrots out in front of him trying to bribe him on. I'm giving him the food after he's made the decision to take the steps onto the trailer. Good boy. And then I also have a feed bucket in the front of the trailer and I use that as um, kind of a jackpot reward when he does go on. Now today, um, since we've had the last few times that I've taken him, or that I've put him on the trailer, we've been going someplace, today we're simply gonna walk on, eat a little food, and come back off. We're not even gonna close him on. And I'm really, really um, picky with them not pushing me around as we're handling around the trailer and as we're thinking about trailer loading. If you find that your horse is dragging you everywhere in front of the trailer, you're probably not gonna have a lot of success when you go to load. So you wanna work until you feel like you have a decent degree of, of control, even if it's not 100% focus, but you have a degree of control before you start going onto the trailer. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna walk up here now. And you can see how I'm kind of using my whip to help keep him straight as well. Good boy. Now once we come here, there. So you're gonna hear me clicking. I clicked there and I don't think he even, even caught it so I'm not gonna reinforce. So that was just the trying the old behavior of ripping his head away. What I was starting to say is you'll hear me clicking now and then and I'll click for a forward step and I click right before I give him a, a food reward. So that's simply what that means and I'm just making a clicking noise with my tongue. Good boy. Good boy. I like to let them investigate it especially in the beginning, pretty much as much as they want to. Good boy. So here I'm gonna give him a little reward. And again, we've practiced this quite a bit. This isn't his first time coming on the trailer. Good boy. But especially when I first walk up to it, um, if they have some anxiety like he does, I don't wanna put a ton of pressure on right away. For him, I'm just gonna be really insistent that he's gotta stay in front of it and he's gotta keep, um, keep straight to it. But I'm kinda of gonna let him decide when he's comfortable enough to move up closer to it in the beginning. As he starts to seem like he's getting a little more comfortable, then I'll start asking him to actually come onto the trailer. So now I'm just gonna add a little pressure cue forward with the lead rope. And if he goes to back up, I'm gonna keep it there. So it's really important not to release any kind of a pressure that you apply for forward motion when they back up. And here I'm gonna bring my whip up and I tend to tap far back as I can, but like I'll tap here on the shoulder. Good boy. And you can really tap anywhere and train them to go forward from a tap anywhere as long as you release on a forward step. Good boy. Good boy. So in the beginning stages here, I'm gonna treat him for every step on the trailer. Now sometimes he'll kind of get in where he just keeps putting his foot on and off, 
And then I'll raise the criteria and I, good boy, I might make it two feet on. And then I might make it taking a step forward with the hind foot with two feet on. And then eventually all the way to stepping all the way on. That's it. <coughs> I think an important thing to remember is that the pressures that you use as you're asking for forward, good boy, good boy. So you're asking for forward. Sometimes you need to apply pressure to get them to take that step forward. And you need to be really consistent with it. But you want to try to use your pressure in a way that is that you're not increasing their anxiety. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. <coughs> And if you've noticed a few times, like earlier, he was kind of chewing on his lead rope, and there where he gave me that little nudge. For him, um, those are behaviors of, of anxiety. So it's not him you know, trying to necessarily be a jerk or be dominant or anything like that. It's just he's anxious, and he kind of does those, I've heard them before called, um, called fooling around behaviors. And, and he does them when he gets a little anxious. So here I'm going to tap again. Good boy. And like there, if he starts to step up before I even tap, then I'm fine with that. I don't even need to start tapping with the whip. Now again here, if he backs up, good boy. When I started putting the pressure on, you always want to keep it there. Never release it when they start to back up. As a as people, we can start to think, oh, I guess that didn't work. I'll try something else. But by releasing the pressure, then we reinforce whatever it is that the horse is doing. And those are the kind of behaviors that they can learn. And that's why sometimes it's necessary, I feel, to use equipment that gives us the control that that they don't get reinforced. Because you can see that can be a pretty dangerous behavior. Good boy. If, he, uh, if he's allowed to do it. And it can be dangerous not just for, for a handler, but it can be dangerous for him. Because if he gets loose and, you know, right here we're next to a road, he can run out on the road. He could step on his lead rope, get tangled in his lead rope. <clears throat> Good boy. And you have to kind of know your horse and um, sometimes make decisions on the day. Like if this was the first time that, that I was loading him, you know, I might be happy with just these first few steps on. <clears throat> Good boy. Or if he was just so anxious and I couldn't get him to calm down, I might be happy with just feeding him on the edge of the trailer and letting him just get used to it a little bit. Good boy. So you can see here, I'm going to start raising the criteria for the treats. And I'm going to start waiting until I get a step forward also from the hind leg. Good boy. Good boy.
Good boy. So here he's going to get his jackpot. We've got a bucket of feed in the front. So I'm going to let him stand here and eat a little bit. And then once he's done eating, I'm going to have him back off. So I'm not going to let him stand on here too long. How long you let your horse stand on just depends on their experience with the trailer, their level of anxiety, a bunch of different factors. But you really want to try to, if you're going to have them back off without enclosing them first, you want to try to time it that you're asking them to go off before they make the decision on their own. And when you're on a trailer with a horse like this, it's really important to maintain a the position of their head. Oh boy, so I can tell he's kind of losing interest in the feed. I'm going to see if he'll just stand here for another minute. I'll feed him one of the treats in my pocket. Good boy. And then we're going to back off. And the more we can do this where he comes on and it's not a big deal, the more easily he's going to be loading and it's going to hopefully keep him loading. Boy, back, back, back. Good boy. Good boy. Now for him, I like to keep him standing in front of the trailer for just a moment after he backs off so he doesn't learn to back off and whip around. And now we're going to walk away from it. And that'll be his session for today. Of course, I realize there can be a whole range of different problems with trailer loading from horses that don't want to go on like Bandit to horses that won't stand quietly or that rush back off the trailer. But I hope that our discussion and then the little demonstration with Bandit just gives you some ideas of how to think about the trailering process and how to maybe be a little bit creative or kind of break down the problems or the challenges that you might be having with your own horse. So what I would like to do now is kind of bring some community knowledge into this. And in the comments, please put if you're either having a trailering issue now, or especially if you had a trailering issue and you resolved it, what worked for you? How were you able to resolve that problem? And what is kind of the ongoing work that you're doing to keep it from reoccurring? So I'll see you in the comments, and as always, if you're watching this video anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, go there to leave a comment. That's where the best conversation happens, and I'll see you there.